You're listening to Real Restaurant Radio, the show that inspires up and coming restaurant and bar owners, along with current operators, to pursue their passion in the restaurant business. I am your host, Kosis Lozanis, and I'm joined, as always, with my good friend, Carrie Hodson. Let us guide you through the process of being a successful owner and teach you how to make an impact in today's culinary world. <laughs> Welcome back to episode five of Real Restaurant Radio. We made it. It's been so long, man. How you been doing? Pretty good. Yeah. I think I say that every time. Pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good better than okay, right? Yeah, it is. I think last episode we were talking about online ordering, Grubhub, Beat24, Vacation. DoorDash, vacations. Mm-hmm. I'll have to do a recap on the vacation soon. I got a nice tan going on, so I was happy. <laughs> I went, um, uh, what do you call it, thing? paddle boarding on the, on, and uh, drank some good local beers in Destin, Florida. Nice. I've got my convertible tan on. Okay. There you yeah. go. There you go. Love my little Miata. <clears throat> well, um, today, uh, you know, we decided to talk about something that's um, obviously a cornerstone to any running any business, running any restaurant, is um, people. Gosh, man. People are your biggest asset and biggest challenge. And we're not just talking customers. It's the whole package. If it's a person, it's complex. Right. Well, uh, a little bit about HR today, right? A little bit about HR. I'm going to check this out. We've got uh, Revolver Blood and Honey, a local craft. Is it a craft beer? Tell me about it, Gary. You're passionate about this. Uh, technically, uh, according to the Brewers Association, it is no longer a craft beer since they were bought by Miller Coors, I believe. So we basically, it's like drinking another Miller Lite, basically. It's the same beer, same people working there, uh, different ownership. People look at it different ways. Um, some people... You know, some people look at it as, oh, it's an opportunity and a cash injection to really grow their business. Um, I just don't want to join the camp that we've all been fighting. I see. So, but as a bit, as you pour me up, as a business owner, though, it's, I think it's so funny. It's almost like being a, a musician. I think all these starving musicians are saying, oh, he's a sellout. He's a sellout. He's fake. While, you know, the but, guy's like, well... But they want his money. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, if you were offered a million-dollar deal with a big label, you know, would you be considered a sellout, too, or would you have taken it? If I if I did take it, I would be considered a sellout, I think. Would I take it? I don't think so. Maybe uh, a smaller company. Um, one, of those, one of those mid-sized companies? Mid-sized. Like, say, Sam Adams bought you out. That's still something. independent craft. I, I I think I would want to stay independent. Okay. Well, Blood and Honey actually is a phenomenal beer. One of the biggest selling beers that I ever put on tap. And I remember messing with them um, three years ago. This is the beer that made that brewery, I think. I think that's like half of their production. I think mm-hmm. a lot of breweries, half of their production is like one beer, right? Uh, a lot yeah, of companies. Depends. Yeah, yeah. I like, think like they're, they're flagship beers. Beers. They have their flagship beer. Like, just, it, it's just, Pedicola says that Velvet Hammer, I think, that does, and you know. None of them plan on it being... It's you know the, the beer that they thought it would be. Do you, so. Have you had that experience uh, in your? Yeah, Chubby Unicorn, our double IPA, um, kind of. I love that Chubby Unicorn, by the way. This is our flagship beer, and it was a beer that we designed and put on tap and sold well in house, but didn't know how the market would take it. There's so many IPAs out there, but uh, it's an excellent beer. It's consistent, it's unique, and that just taken off. So. Yeah, it, and the name, you know, the name, right? It's yeah. all about the name and the marketing. <laughs> That's true. That's, That's half true. of the beer business these days. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, let's yeah. just cut to the chase. The beer's got to be great. The but, name definitely but helps. But the name, for some reason, helps, you know? Right. Like, I think with the Buffalo Butt was one of them that was really popular. It wasn't even a good beer, I think. I forgot who makes that. Something <laughs> from Colorado, I think, right? Uh, I can't remember. But, yeah. you know, there's those yeah, names yeah, yeah. that just, like... Stick. Yeah. Blood and honey. People like the name. Cheers. And the beer's still good, so kudos to them. We're going to need to have a few sips of this while we talk about HR. Mm-hmm. Uh, drinking on the job now. <laughs> Researching, market research. There you go. There it is. It's still a um, phenomenal beer, no matter who owns it. I think it's a great. It's a great wheat beer. Yeah. How did uh, let's get back to um, hiring? How did you? Gosh, when you first started, you need wow ten people, right? Like twenty people. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, how do you get the word out? Like, so it's crazy. One of my friends brought like four of his friends. Oh, okay. And it was great. My. Uh, I, I just went online and just started typing in um, server training manuals, server training, training manuals, yada, yada, yada. 
put together like this this pamphlet together. We spent one full week training before we opened the door. It was like every day mm-hmm. we sat down from eight till noon talking about um, what we're going to do, like wine knowledge and, and all these different knowledge. It was great because I had like 12 getting, people. So getting I, to I, know each other. And, exactly. Yeah. And, we, and the chef would bring out food that he would be making that day before our grand opening and we'd taste it and all these things. Sure. So we actually, and, and I knew what was going to happen. I knew that when we opened our restaurant, it was going to be like, Hell's Gates were going to open up because everybody in town wants to try the new place out. Yeah. And I told the staff that. I said, and you only get one shot. And this is me being a naive 25-year-old restaurant owner that had no experience owning a restaurant or managing a restaurant, just being a server. But I knew from my 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 just my knowledge and just my gut feeling, I knew that, you know. And my, my mindset was also that, you know, you've got to, uh, like that Eminem song, you know, you only get one shot, don't miss your chance to blow. No, I'm serious, though, you know. Like, you really do only get one shot to make it in this world. And, you know, if your business folds, that's it, like, how are you going to recoup that loss? You know, wait another 10 years and save it more money? I don't know. I mean, like we said in the first episode, you got to bring all your skills and talents to the table um, and try to build a culture of people that uh, see your vision and want to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, I think uh, during the build up phase, having a sign up, posting every once in a while that we'll be hiring soon, updates on your open date. Um, and then Facebook ads, Craigslist ads, talk to as many people as possible, get as many applications as possible. That way you have a bigger pool of people to pick from. And I think a lot of like how you decide is, you know, how did they fill out their application? Were they, you know, detail oriented? Did they fill everything out? Or did they like, oh, I already filled out my name once or, you know, skipping over stuff to fill it out quickly. That's something I look at. Um, Penmanship, you know, right? They, <laughs> Penmanship's not real big for me. Um, sometimes I have you, bad handwriting. <laughs> well, sometimes you can't even call them back because you can't even read their phone number to call them back. You know, it's, I've had the applicants like, I cannot even call you back because I don't even... <laughs> That's true. If they can't give you a phone number that works, you know, then, well, maybe, you know, this isn't going to work out. Or if they don't have transportation that's been a big thing for us is i am not and this isn't my job this is your job and showing up to work is bare minimum you know being able to get to work is bare minimum so it may sound kind of harsh a little bit like i'm not being compassionate uh, but i've you know on the flip side i've given hundreds of rides home and and stuff but i can't drop what i'm doing to pick you up to take you to work you need a plan on getting here and there's so many so many ways public transportation your friend your you know co-worker last episode we talked about uber uber eats uber they have just uber before Uber Eats, right you can just yeah order an uber driver just yeah just just start walking yeah if you have to like i've ridden my bike to work before you know i've had to uber (laughs) so um, availability is another big thing, you know, do, are they working another job? Do, are they only available in the evenings or, you know, why I'll also ask why, like, why aren't you available on the weekends to work at a restaurant? Well, well, I just, you know, I like the weekends to myself. You're in the wrong industry, you know, <laughs> maybe a bank, maybe go maybe. work at a bank, you know, from, <laughs> from 9, 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Sure, sure. And then there's the untangible stuff, the sit down interviews. Um, I like to let my uh, brother in law uh, sit down with them first. Um, so you do a two step interview? Mm-hmm. And then he'll, if he kind of gets a good vibe, he'll. He'll go through all that stuff, basically. If he gets a good vibe, he'll say, hold on just a sec, I think Carrie's here. If, um, you know, you wanted to meet, meet him or talk to him or, or whatever. And I'll, I'll talk to Casey for about five minutes in the back and kind of get the background story. And then if there's a, you know, a red flag or something I want to know about in more detail, I can sit down and talk to them. Um, and it's not always experience-based problems. Like if they're the right personality, trainable, self-managed type of person, then experience is pretty low on the Dalton pole for me at least. What, what about for you? I agree 100% with that. I think I would rather actually sometimes – experience is really nice to have because there's a lot of things that you just can't train in those two or three days that you spend training or whatever it is. 
uh, that you just pick up on. That Especially starting out, yeah. You do need a couple of guys who really know what they're doing. Like we had a pit master at the beginning that kind of, uh, you know, I had a team of people that really helped us get started. You you were kind of on your own almost. <laughs> I, I really was, yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it's so funny because, you know, I think the competition is so low. I mean, if you come in like showered and don't stink and clean cut and like come in and present, well, I'm not saying wear a three piece suit, but well why, rested. But, and... but why, yeah, but why not like, come in like with like a nice pair of jeans like that are not shredded and like some shoes that don't have that are not falling apart? Like if you just come in semi presentable, I've definitely not hired someone based on their first impression, of course, appearance. Because, if you can't take care of yourself or take the interview seriously, then. You know, or if you're 30 minutes late to an interview sure. for no reason without calling, exactly. then how often are you going to show up on time? Or, like, are and you going to be a no-call, no-show? And I've hired, Carrie, I've hired so many people that on my gut instinct was like, this is not going to work out. And I was like, let me give them a chance, and it doesn't work out. Hmm. Now, I, I'm i so hard if, if I don't think it's going to work out, I don't hire them. I don't waste my time because it always works out without fail that... I was always right in the beginning. Hmm. So go with your gut. When you guys are hiring people, go with your gut. That's it, the intangible kind of instinct part of hiring. Yeah, it is. I mean, and, and in our industry, what, what, I mean, what's a resume in our industry? You know, like if they put down 10 different restaurants, does that mean that they just couldn't cut it in, in the restaurant? Because I mean, what did the restaurant do so bad they had to move so many times? You know, I, I'm fine if they were, you know, at McDonald's for a year and then working for, I don't know, a home remodeling company for three years and then moved to Texas and looking for a new job. Like at least I can see some sort of consistency. I can see some, you know, measure of loyalty that they can hold a job for longer than six months. Isn't that, isn't that crazy that employees don't realize that employers are looking for more longevity and loyalty than they are number of, because I think when young people are like 18 years old, like, Oh, I worked at five restaurants. I should put all five down because it's going to show all the experience I have. Like, well, no, it's going to show that you're not committed to any one restaurant. I'd rather see one person work at one place for five years than work at five places for a year each. Sure, you know? absolutely. And it's expensive to hire people, especially for me. You know, you give them, I don't know. You get, you give them t-shirts, you give them aprons on well, the training and the mistakes they make, and the mistakes they make are expensive to recuperate or to uh the ex- you know the mistakes they make are to the customer <laughs> yeah they're expensive to recuperate the mistakes absolutely especially in my life you know especially with the full service where everything depends on that server the entire way the restaurant is on you know that server's back you know that guest experience may never ever come back because of an inexperienced yeah sure so i think uh one of the happiest times in uh Owning this business uh, was the first week or two of being open and just hearing the door open. And I think everyone who's working there, mostly, now, you know, there were a couple of people who didn't make it a week, but um, mostly everyone's really excited. Sure. And if you can take that kind of, you know, some of it's anxiety, <laughs> but if you can take that energy and put it and make it into something positive, then you're going to be fine. Yeah. So you've put, spent all this time and energy building, you know, don't hide under the counter <laughs> and, uh, don't be shy about saying we're opening, we need good people. Um, and then I think in the future, uh, you've got your schedule filled up, but someone walks in the door and they really like, you know, that they could be an asset, make room for them. Yes. Um, I still struggle with that because you're looking at your, your hours and you want to be fair to everyone. Um, I do that sometimes too, sometimes where if someone walks in, I'm like, well, we'll fully staff, like, well, I'm not going to miss this opportunity. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. I'm just, I'm going to have to cut from the other staff because I know that this person walking in mm-hmm. will definitely be a great thing for the business. I mean, I definitely read the application at least, you know, at least sure. do that. And so, I mean, that brings up another point. How do, how do you, how do you hire people? Like, how does the paperwork work? Do you have a, official application you know yeah, i buy those just those quick little sam's club application thing you know the little okay. quick little because really for me it's it's the interview it's meeting that person because i'm i'm talking to servers so i need to meet someone who's articulate who is charismatic and that can really be shown in the first who can write in detail you also want to know their history so the application kind of really helps with that it does it does 
I haven't. And how old they are? You're not allowed to ask how old they are. Yeah. Well, you'd be you, at least 18, you know, to serve uh, alcohol. So they have to be at least. You, you can ask when they graduated high school. Sure. And then do the math. <laughs> well, I think you're allowed to ask when they're 18, though, right? I mean, you if, have to. Uh, it can be a requirement. A yeah, it can be a requirement. Yeah. So they have to be at least 18. And uh, yeah, it's it's crazy. I, you know, I've been through hundreds and hundreds of employees. Keep in mind that, you know, I always have you know, 12 to 15 servers working for me. That's my main employee turnover is servers. Sure. And with servers, you know, you're talking about kids that are going to college or seasonal for help. A summer job. Mm-hmm. So it, one of the most beautiful things about running the restaurant or owning the business is just meeting so many people. I've met more people in the past five years than I've ever met in my entire life. It's just like so many and everybody's got their own flavor, man. The, the personalities sure. are so different. So it is unique. exciting. You do, you get disappointed every once in a while, but for the most part, you get to uh, incubate other people's growth, you know? And sure. um, I can think about times in, uh, you know, in my past, or I'm going to say youth, <laughs> but uh, where I've been inadvertently inspired by someone's kindness or structure or ability to take the high road um so you have that opportunity as a leader to inspire some people i think it's beautiful to, to mold and and assist and help and develop because i do a lot of that with with my young people that work for me is like what what has made me successful like i want to see my servers open up their own restaurants outgrow or grow you or exactly like yeah. I, I want you to be successful so when everybody says somebody says hey hey i'm gonna quit and go somewhere else i'm always like that's beautiful like i'm, I'm kudos to you you know thanks for, for, if it's for the right reason yeah if it's for the right reason you know if, if it, and sometimes i've actually talked people out of quitting because like I, i'm not gonna work here anymore I'm like well why are you not gonna work here anymore it's like well it's too tough for me it's like well let's know, make it easier let's find well, a way well, what's or, too tough or well, let's talk or through like, it yeah like, you know life is tough you know like let's, let's 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 make it happen you know like it's not gonna get any easier anywhere else Sure. So, yeah, the grass isn't always greener. It's not. It's not. <laughs> the only place the grass is greener is on this side of the dirt. <laughs> uh, so uh, on that note, uh, honest que- honest answer, okay? Okay. You, you ever had a, uh, a, a uh, employee come back for a job? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, sometimes they Funny how that think works. they have an opportunity somewhere and they... You know, the um, they were poached. What did you just some, say? The grass is greener. Yeah, the grass is not always greener, is it? Um, or they miss the environment that you've created, or their coworkers, or the convenience to how close they are to work. Um, or they sometimes when you change your scene, you you realize how good it was. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, agree with that. I think that's exactly why my servers. I think I have a roster of about 12 to 15 people who have co- left and come back. Wow. That's a lot. So I have about, about 15 people have left. What's, 15 servers have what, left and come back. Okay. So what me- metric is there for, are they, you know, when you, we both use home base, right? And so when you uh, terminate someone on home base, there is two buttons. Are they eligible for rehire? Yes or no? There, there, you know. And do you just always click yes? Just <laughs> no. There are some servers that I, I'm just. Uh, I think you mentioned this off air. That's like I just would not hire him back. Like it was actually a blessing that he quit because I was wanting to get rid of him anyway. Type thing, you know. Mm-hmm. So I've had I had servers quit, which sometimes that's usually how it is. You know, when someone quits, usually they just don't fit in the organization. They don't work with their coworkers. They're not just they're just not a good fit and they realize that sometimes on their own and they're like, Hey, sure. I'm quitting. And it and can be a little dramatic maybe, but they took the band aid off for you. Exactly. Or you didn't realize that, you know, you're putting too much energy in that individual or, you know, they were weighing the team down, weakest link sort of. It's so funny because it's when they leave, you realize how bad of an infection they were to the organization. You're like, wow, or how, or a how sigh good, of relief. You know, but yeah, lots of times it's sure. Yeah, when it's someone who's quitting, it's in a dramatic way. Then it might be yeah. I, this I've, is actually a positive thing. No, I've had some on on the flip side though. I've had like you just said, I've had some some uh, employees leave, and I'm like, wow, you know that that employee did a lot of stuff for our business. Sure. Like so, what what would happen if you lost a key employee, like one of your chefs or exactly? And I had like some bartenders, some some head managers that moved on. Sure. 
And, and it's not just holes in the schedule, you know. You yeah. gotta uh, you gotta think about wh- everything that they did and accomplished while they were there, and how how to fill that. Um, you gotta also think if you're if you are the one initiating the termination or firing someone, um, how do you kind of prepare for that? And I think as a as a young restaurant owner. I think it's easy to say, get the heck out of my restaurant. You're fired. <laughs> Donald Trump style. Yeah. But I think he does it, He I think he just does that for the camera because behind the scenes, there's probably an HR team that's behind him that's writing him up, writing up that employee or whatever. Sure. And I, I've gotten one phone call from the uh, Texas Workforce Commission for something that... Uh, I've been threatened that too, but and I think you know the, the what we've been talking about entitlements and these you know the kids that are entitled that they, they can just call and every little thing, and uh, you know the Texas Workforce Commission after I tell them my side of the story are kind of laughing at it like don't worry about it. Sure, I but, mean Texas is a right to work state. Sure, so they're not under contract to stay. They can leave whenever they want without reason, and you can terminate them without reason uh, as long as they don't have contract. Right. Um, sure, and well. Let's be clear. Of course, I you shouldn't and I wouldn't uh, fire someone for their age, their gender, their sex, All or their things. race. Like, obviously, those are the the offenses that the workforce commission is trying to protect against. Also, you know, good work environment or safe work environment, that sort of thing. But you didn't show up to work, or like you just have a really crappy attitude. You're fired. The state, the state doesn't care about that. Yeah. So when you do decide, you have to let a key person go. Um, I think it's important to. Well, you should have in the past had clear job descriptions, but maybe sit down and write write like uh, the liabilities or like first the, the the duties that they do, you know, um, and then like do they have a key? Do they have access to your safe? Do they have uh, access to your security cameras, your um, your employee Facebook, you know, private group? Uh, the do you need to change the alarm code? You know, all these things that you, you don't whether they you think they're going to be malicious or not. Um, it's your job to be a good steward and protector of your business. And then once you take um, those things, you can check those off. Those are tasks, basically. Sure. Delete them off this. Then yada yada. yada. Um, but then you can take their their work responsibilities and to more accurately uh, explain and distribute those to other employees or the new hire, right? Yeah, it's a lot, man. It's a lot. You know, it, it never feels good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or it might in the moment if it's a like sure, you know, you're fired. And then, yeah, exactly. Uh, but man days and weeks afterwards i'm thinking of how i could have been a better leader or you know it's kind of like a breakup where to go yeah, where, where to go wrong basically is the question and, and i've had what did i miss or is are other people feeling that way you sure know? I, i've had problems like so just where i've been at is like i've went like i've taken a server and be like hey i want you to do like some managerial duties and then you know i have like managerial pay to go with those managerial duties and I'm looking at like the I R- gotta see the money. I'm looking at the ROI, and I'm like, well, I'm just not seeing you do those things. A change in in sales, mm-hmm. and I just don't see the like I'm spending all this money on you, but like what are like nothing's really changing. Sure, so, I mean, a lot of people have the attitude of, well, that's not my job, and if you have that mentality, then it never will be your job. Yeah, yeah, that's that's for real, but. Uh, that's from my point of view, though. <laughs> I mean, ha- have you ever, like, I know you work with a lot of family members, but, like, have you ever uh, maybe changed the role of someone, say, from, like, oh, like, sure. somebody basic to, and then put them in a head position? Absolutely. I feel like you're more critical on that person now because now he's, like, oh, hey, I just, I'm paying you more money. Now I'm really going to, like, look at you with a microscope type thing. I think when you sit down and you give someone that promotion, so to speak, which is what you're talking about, I think, is... um you know, because it's a better opportunity, more responsibility, and, you know, some cash. But then you're uh, obviously harder on that person because now you're spending a lot more money on that person. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I mean, but maybe you should just be clear about that ahead of time. Say, these are, do you want this? Not, I'm promoting you to yada yada. Say, hey, there's this opportunity. This is what our company, our family, you know, I need. 
do you want to be that person? So that way it's kind of clear cut. Basically, there's they, like... They chose it. They're, they're, and there's a layout of, of the uh, things that they need to do. Right. And be, yeah. And then have the, have your list of responsibilities, have your expectations, and uh, then say, do you have any questions about that or any concerns or, you know, oh, I don't think I can do that or I don't really understand what you mean by I should be more present on the floor. Well, be more present on the floor means... And then explain that you want them to be able to talk to customers. And Don't be, be condescending. To... <laughs> I'm yeah. so condescending. I'm all my... Everybody says I'm so Was condescending. Was I being condescending just now? I, I can do that. If I, I'm just really trying to get my idea from my head to your head. Exactly. The clearest way possible. And I'm trying to ABC it for you guys. Right. It's not mean. It's just... Yeah. My spirit is being able to be the best version of yourself. I want to be the best version of myself. Sure. Let's cut the crap. Exactly. And get there. Yeah. And then we can have fun and drink a beer together. <laughs> and I think, and I think you have to definitely be uh, careful because, like, everybody sometimes thinks that it's fun, and it's like, well, no, like this is how we survive. This is how we raise our family. Is this restaurant? And as fun as it is, you know, like when you drink a beer, that's like you taking some product from the business. Like, I think you have to kind of, and I think people think it's a, it's because we're so fun. It's such a game. It's not like it's serious computer work. It's like. We're always having fun, always playing around that at the end of the day, we have to realize like, hey, this is like a business mm -hmm. and we are making, we're selling a product and we're taking an income. This is how I pay you. This is how I pay. <laughs> yeah. Like where does the money come from? I think most people get that. Yeah. Um, most experienced people who've had other jobs. Sure. Understand that. So I don't think when you deal with sometimes you get new employees, they don't realize they realize it, but they just don't realize it. You know, like they don't like they yeah. they don't think that deep. You have to be careful, though. Are you saying that for their benefit? Or are you saying that because you feel bad about sales that day? <laughs> <laughs> just being well, you know well, honest. Like, what's good about my servers is like I can anytime I I hire a server, it's like hey, listen, and I give them the whole entrepreneurial speech because it really is true. Like as a mm -hmm. server, you're an entrepreneur, but like you only make two thirteen an hour from me. You're you're. So all it's your money be comes, what you make of it. Like, do you make more money playing on your cell phone or do you make more money investing into your tables, talking to your tables about how their day is and how their... Maybe you, talk about coffee and dessert before they get their meal. So it's already in their head. So, or maybe upsell them to the margarita the week sure. or cocktail of the week. Or, exactly. You know, so, I mean, I think we Come see in that. 10 minutes early and figure out what the heck's going on. <laughs> yeah. Well, what is the new beer on tap, you know? Yeah. yeah. What is this brute IPA? going right. on over here right is that the chubby unicorn no it's not chubby unicorn that was the last ipa we had right or oh, oh i think it's a hazy beard mm, <laughs> no it's not <laughs> just ask your bartender but yeah. yeah that's yeah that human the human side of it is very complex carry and i always talk about everybody says let's open up another restaurant or kosis you should open up another restaurant i was like mm. i was like you know if when's location if, two coming goes yeah, this yeah if humans didn't exist i would say let's open up 10 more restaurants you know it's uh if it was just vending machines i can i can do 10 vending machines right i can put some uh euro euro sandwiches in a vending machine you know maybe one day we'll break out of that but the human side and i think that's with any organization fear <laughs> and i think that's the biggest thing that keeps me awake at night is like where do i go wrong or how can i empower or motivate or make the staff feel because somebody did it already, right? Like the guy who owns Olive Garden, mm -hmm. he was able to empower somebody to run it for him and build up a management system, right? Right. Well, and the guy who owns Landry's, I mean, building so a management like, system. What does he have that I don't have? And that's the question that keeps me awake at night. Is you know how can I develop this because it's de developable? Is, is that a word? Mm -hmm. Developable. Yeah, it is developable, and it, big companies do it all the time. But 99% of small companies don't have that ability to, to perform that. Sure. Create management. Create, create a uh, it's system. It's a risk. Um, I think you spend a lot of time uh, scrapping together the capital to build your business or to start your business. And if that's a goal for you, then you need to spend the same amount of time or more planning to take it to the next level. Because I think that's more of a long-term goal, right? Like, because mm -hmm. I think you and I are such a. Do you want another restaurant? First of all, you that, know? yeah, that's a question you have to <laughs> or ask do yourself. Do you want another stream of income? That's the question. You, those are questions you have definitely have to ask yourself. But when you ask yourself those questions, 
uh, then you uh, start realizing, hey, what do I have to do to do that, or why am I not doing that? There's a lot of like a lot of internal questions that you're asking yourself. Sure. I think, and it, it's so great because, you know, you and I are both the same age, and I think we're both hungry, uh, and both want those same big goals. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we're both so uh, such a huge part of our businesses, like. Carrie is intrinsic and Kosis is opa. The ideas and prospects or opportunities are always more going to be more exciting t- than maintenance. Exactly. Uh, I like that. Say that again. Can I say that again? Can you say it again? <laughs> prospects and ideas and opportunities are always going to be more exciting than main- maintenance. I like that. That's the quote of the day. I think we start doing a, uh, some type of quote or some type of saying for each episode. And I think that was a great one. No one ever thinks about the maintenance. They think about the goals and the dreams, but it's the day to day. And I was listening to a politician now that you mentioned that talking about, no one wants to talk about infrastructure, rebuilding mm-hmm. roads. They want to talk about building new buildings, right? New. No one wants to talk about, you know, rebuilding. Po- yeah. Like yeah. let's rebuild these bridges. Like that's not fine. Like I want a na- a bridge named after myself. Yeah. You did a remodel of your restaurant and that, and I'm sure that hurt your pocketbook big time. <laughs> and it, it was kind of fun but on the other hand you're like i feel like i'm paying for the same thing twice (laughs) exactly um but it enhances the experience people have and it makes maybe it makes organization better or uh you know you can justify it through you know your roi um maintenance of is always going to be hard and uh, I'm not just talking about fixing your toilet, but having staff parties and empowering you, your your employees and taking some time for yourself, which I suck at. <laughs> yeah, I think, we, I think uh, all restaurant owners probably suck at taking time for themselves. But yeah, that's that's the human factor, Carrie. Yeah. That's and there's, we can talk about it a lot more than just 30 minutes. But absolutely, that does bring us to the I'll end of ten more things on my five. list. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast, and I hope uh, that we brought a little bit of knowledge uh, and insight into how we run our businesses and how you know restaurants are ran. And I hope you guys learned some stuff. Carrie, any final words for closure? Yeah, I just want to say I hope to learn with, with people. Um, send us your comments and questions and advice, our direction. And uh, I'm not saying we have all the answers. Obviously, we were talking about location number two and what keeps us up at night. And um, I want to grow with the people listening. Sounds good. Well, guys, another episode of Real Restaurant Radio, and we will see you guys next time.